Hey, hey! Welcome out to Channel14.com's Bodega Night. I am Jao. This is Norm from Radio Norm. Oh yeah, and um, yeah, we are live. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> we have <laughs> the one listener <laughs> chatting with us right now as we are recording live. Yeah, dude. And um, because we are recording live, um, Migs Lopez is asking about <laughs> like <laughs> love stuff, dude. <laughs> Hey, cool. And yes. we also have Kageyama online. What's up, guys? So, Alright. Shout out to Makati. <laughs> yeah, dude. Live from Cebu. Um, yeah, so how have you been... Uh, what have you been up to, Norm? How have you been and whatnot? Uh, I've been doing the whole wandering around thing. Uh, I haven't been able to crank out uh, more stuff. I, I've uh, been busy trying to get more content. <laughs> <laughs> living is what it, what I'm trying to do is living. What do you mean not wandering? Making more content. <laughs> what do you mean um, wandering like 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 traveling the country and stuff or Yeah. Just that's literally wandering around Manila mostly. Uh, okay. <laughs> like waiting for traffic to ease up before you Yes. like head home. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> Walking around. Why? Because it's going to take so much longer if I take the taxi. Hashtag real facts with Norm. <laughs> Truth hurts. Dude, how's how's the weather been like up in Manila? Um, and isolated. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's uh yeah. How how is it like affecting the traffic and whatnot? Uh, it's the usual. It's it's crazy weather. Uh, it's bipolar weather. It's uh sunny one minute and rainy the next, and you know it's the Carmageddon mixture of it's a payday Friday, and just as five p.m. rolls around, it starts drizzling just enough. For you know, panic to set in, and everybody's just rushing to get home. Mm. So you know, gridlock happens, and you can't leave until at least two a.m. Right. So uh, Migs Lopez asks, "What if I fell in love with a married woman with three boyfriends? What should he do?" Yeah, dude. What should he do if he falls in love with a married woman with three boyfriends? You're asking the single man. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, I'm I'm not touching that with a ten foot pole. <laughs> Rather uh, with the <laughs> ten foot pole, wink, wink. The ten foot pole um, with penicillin on, on the side. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> what if you fell in love with a woman with three boyfriends? I, I would suggest you move on, my friend. Or, uh, <laughs> or, or do you have three boyfriends and you've fallen in love with a woman? <laughs> I'm not judging, man. Woman. I'm not judging. No judgy here, Migs. Uh, more comments below. All right, what's he say? Nope. Um, if you fell in love with a married woman with three boyfriends, move on, my friend. <laughs> she has everybody else entertaining her. Why are you, uh, uh, spending your life, uh, what, or your time entertaining the one woman with three other guys? Uh, value yourself your time, right? Yeah. <laughs> or roll with it. It's your life. <laughs> <laughs> was it? It was, uh, it was, AG keeps on saying that if you, or that, that, that you should, do whatever you want. Just make sure that you can live with the consequences. That is a better, better <laughs> advice given from a man who is not here. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much like every, uh, what do you call it? So pretty much like every love related question that anybody is going to send to us, that's probably going to be the answer or like some, uh, some variation, you know, like do whatever you want, but be sure that you can live with the consequences. <laughs> That's true. Because you're given free will and whatnot. Yeah. Everybody yeah. has a choice here. Yeah. Uh, Except that's... maybe her husband. Oh, yeah. Huh. She has a husband and three boyfriends. She, she has a husband and three boyfriends. She has a very busy life. Probably no kids. Yeah. So, uh, yes, Migs. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Keep those penicillin pills in handy. Yeah. So, Norm, how have you been? Uh, how's, how's Radio Norm been? Like, oh, oh I my haven't... God. It's been on hiatus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have literally in the drawer beneath my microphone. There you go. Hear me pull it out. I have a page from the newest. <laughs> the one page from the newest radio norm which I have yet to actually record or find time recording. Let me put it back in the treasure drawer where it belongs. Yeah. Uh, hmm. It's a no- normally radio norm is comes from a place of frustration and hatred like when you know traffic rolls around and it's getting worse and it takes you three hours to get to work actually it took me five hours to get to work the other day yeah and I live five kilometers away 
<laughs> like that that seems if to I, be oh go ahead yeah no no I, I was just gonna say that that seems to be like the problem of manila nowadays yeah yeah manila's are uh, divided into different sites we're trying to find different ways to solve the traffic problem without actually building more roads hmm. it seems to me Right, so if you were like if if you were given carte blanche, or if let's say you were president and they gave you like the emergency powers and whatnot, um, and not keeping in mind constitutional limitations on emergency powers, how would you solve Metro Manila's traffic problem? <laughs> um, without building more roads, without because that takes time and time we already mapped out the time and it's going to take at least 10 years uh, commandeer all public vehicles huh. make them into government vehicles government control all buses all jeepneys all tricycles yes Kagiyama says napalm <laughs> <laughs> napalm might work but I'm afraid of the you know there's 20 million people in Manila <laughs> uh. that is not how you make Manila great again napalm is not the answer <sighs> Are you getting a cold? Yeah, dude, the weather here hasn't been great either. And everybody's getting cold. I had a cold for an entire month. That was annoying. Yeah. Dear listeners, all two of you, (laughs) all two of you, who I hope are still there. Nope, they're gone. (laughs) (laughs) All right. um, What's new in the world of TV? Because this is, after all, Bodega Nights. And we all watch TV, apparently, on some level. <laughs> yeah. Uh, About, uh, what's it? You haven't been watched, or you haven't watched Luke Cage yet, no? No. But I hear it's, uh, there's, some people aren't getting it. What do you mean? Like, they're, like, I'm hearing reviews. I can't avoid the re- some of the commentary on it. And some people are, seem to be saying that, uh, the people who aren't exposed to the comments are saying it's racist. Huh, that's... That's really weird for a show that I think goes out of its way to be very Inclusive. not racist. <laughs> like, there's this one big monologue that Luke Cage has about, like, the N-word and this monologue about how uh, Pops always wanted to see, or wanted his kids to see a black man working for his keep, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know how that can be. I don't know. I'm more... I'm more excited for Defenders. Oh, so yeah. Get Luke Cage out of the way. Get, uh, get Iron Fist out of the way. I'm more excited for all of them together in one show. Yeah, yeah. Um, like Iron Fist. Uh, were, were you ever like? Were you ever like a big fan of Iron Fist? Uh, not that big a fan. It's, he seemed like he, he, I treated him like a side character, and that's my dogs in the background. Uh. I was more interested in Doctor Strange at the time. Oh, uh, yeah, they are, like, really similar, huh? In so far as, yeah. like, twirling their hands around and making what? magic-y stuff. White people knee-deep in Asian stuff. <laughs> yeah. White people <laughs> knee-deep in Asian stuff. <laughs> Real facts, people. But it's not white. But it's not appropriation. It's not, it's not cultural appropriation. They were actually written that way. You that know, was, Iron um, Fist is actually white. He just studied kung fu. Yeah, that was a like really weird thing no? when um, some people had that quote criticism of uh, Iron Fist's casting as being like a white dude. Yeah, I heard about that. Like, that's just is it weird? <laughs> is it symptomatic of people who aren't who just don't do the research on the character? Should they be doing the research? Uh, well, if if people are gonna be like running their mouths, then yeah, I mean, do a little bit of research, even if it's just a little bit, you know. Um, like there was that. It, it reminds me of that cosplay picture of uh, oh man, what was it? There was there was this one. There was this one DC character that uh-huh. is uh like the daughter of harvey dent or something but you know she did the whole joker she has this whole joker vibe to it to to her right right um like yeah she's this really deep cut in the dc universe that i have like really no idea or that that i don't have very much um idea about but this one girl like cosplayed as her and uh and she did a really good job getting the look of the character down and a bunch of comments were uh, around the idea of like hashtag fake geek or whatever because it looked like yeah. this mishmash of a bunch of different characters. Right. And this girl, at least to the mind of that person, was getting, um, you know, the Joker wrong and 
uh, the Mad Hatter and all of that, like completely wrong. When really, it's a uh, yeah. You, you, you it, get where I'm going with this. Yeah, it's a it's a. I remember I, I remember seeing it and I don't remember the specific version of the Joker, but I know it's a it exists. It's a very niche version of him, but it exists. Yeah, and it's actually a very good cosplay. Yeah, and so it 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 feels sort of the same, you know. It's <laughs> or it's it's a weird. Is, does it is it is it a weird gray area? Like, uh, are people allowed to be uh, slightly ignorant because it's a very obscure character? Well, yeah, I, I guess with with that particular character, sure. But then you know, say with uh, say with Iron Fist, um, like if you even have this passing interest in comic book TV shows and whatnot then like you should know that there's this thing called iron fist coming out and with like the entirety of uh, the sum total of human knowledge quote unquote available on the internet then it couldn't really hurt to you know do a google search maybe um but then the other thing is is, like could this also be somebody that is uh could this just be a group of people that are just trolling right like because the whole whitewashing thing has kind of been an issue mm-hmm. in um, in Hollywood. Hey, um, I have a I had a question um, about that actually. Uh, trying to rack my brain for it, suddenly blanked out. Wait there. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Miko Miko messaged us. Uh, Duella Dent. Yeah, yeah. That's a yes, the steampunk female jo- Joker version. Yeah. So there we go. This is right, cool. Iron man. Fist. Like if ever uh, if ever we do like this whole live thing and say one of us can't make it to record, the person that can't make it to record should be in chat all the time to be <laughs> like the researcher. <laughs> like if you guys do the recording thing, like you'll see me there in chat. Can't record. Being like you gotta the, provide you know, fact checker. <laughs> yeah, being the fact checker, the stat guy. That's you. <laughs> uh, where are we? Uh, Iron Fist yep. uh, and research. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about that and. Uh, uh, I was uh, trying to figure out where people went, might have gone wrong with how Iron Fist started out. And I think part of the blame might have been on how the Netflix or Marvel or the studios have decided to introduce uh, Dan or Iron Fist. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, well, if you, if you see the trailer, it's really more of just him uh, being a badass and him... Uh, coming, it's about him coming back to New York, isn't it? Right, yeah, New York, yeah. And slowly they're teasing about him, his kung fu powers and the mystics, uh, about him being Iron Fist. And that's all serious and gritty and great and it's all amazing. But another way, another take on it could be about them playing, uh, making jokes about the fact that he's white. And his name is Iron Fist. It's clearly uh, he's doing kung fu. You know, it, they kind of break that wall already before the show even starts, so they don't have to explain that whole. You know, just because you know he's white doesn't necessarily doesn't mean that he can't get into kung fu. Or he can't get mystical powers from Asia. Or... Yeah. Just you know, throwing my two cents in there. Yeah, or two thousand yuan because <laughs> China. <laughs> it's 2016, people. <laughs> why, are we, why are we still keeping the Chinese things to the Chinese people? Yeah, so, like, uh, wait, was I, was I, where was, where was I going with this? Iron Fist, cultural appropriation, criticism, really weird, like, really weird. But then, uh, I guess the same could be said about, um, uh, what's his name, Johnny Storm being. Played by Fantastic Michael B. Jordan Four? in Fantastic Fant Four Stick. Fant Four Stick, yes. Yeah. Weird name. Yeah. I-, I think we had like a discussion about this with Dave some time ago on a Bodega Nights episode. I'm not even sure if it's still on the feed. But like talking about uh, race and comic book characters. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's way back, dude. Um, a year it's, ago, it was uh, something about and and um and and my position still hasn't changed. Um, if uh, well, if there is something that if, if there is some story reason that compels you to have the character a particular race, then don't change that person's race, right? Mm-hmm. Like 
um, there's no way that you can have Steve Rogers be a black guy. Uh, Just yeah. because of the context of the creation of Steve Rogers would make a black guy being Steve Rogers weird? Um, well, the here, uh, Steve Rogers can't be a black guy because of... Um, well, because of the time period, because yes. it's because Captain America is, after all, very sort of period piece. But then that doesn't necessarily preclude him. But there's just something about the sort of ideal Aryan specimen punching Hitler in the face. Ah, uh, yeah. Right. It's um. The irony of it. Yeah, yeah. So there is that, and I and I guess the argument could be made that if Steve Rogers were black and he punches Hitler in the face, there is a certain sort of effect to that as well but yeah you know um the thing about steve rogers is that to hitler it is he is one of us saying that we are wrong and and Mm. i think you know that's sort of why you can't that's a big part of why you can't have steve rogers be uh portrayed by a black guy but then with iron fist not sure (laughs) Like an Iron Fist be black. They did it for Spider Man. <laughs> and the Human Torch. Actually, Spider Man is black Latino, if I remember correctly. Just, uh, just for everybody what, listening. <laughs> yeah, dude, Miles Morales. Right? Miles Morales. Alright, so, uh, Iron Fist versus Afro, Sa- Afro Samurai. Who would win in a fight? Tough call. I'd say Afro Samurai. Iron Fist. But he's an Afro Samurai. He's got a fro. That's enough. <laughs> And he is a samurai. Uh, e Nikki is asking to mention her great theory about Manila traffic. All right, what is? Oh yeah, dude. Um, what do you call it? Go, so yeah, going back to Manila traffic. Um, are you familiar with the? Uh, are you familiar with the Cobra effect? Mm, familiarize me, sir. Right, so Educatize the Cobra me. effect is this thing where, well, basically in broad strokes, it's your solution to the problem makes the problem worse. So, like, uh-huh. apparently in India a long time ago, there was a problem with, like, Cobras and stuff. And so what the British government did was they decided to incentivize people to, like, kill Cobras and... Every time they brought in a dead cobra, they got some money. Now, what some enterprising Indians did was they farm cobras. decided to farm cobras, yeah. And um, once, like, the British people found out that, oh, this might not be such a good idea, and they stopped this incentive. Uh, the, Suddenly, you have an entire farm of cobras. Yeah, and the cobra farmers just sort of let them loose because them they were, <laughs> you know, worthless, right? So that's, that's the cobra effect. And um, and one example of that, I think, in the Philippines is uh, Metro Manila's number coding scheme, where the solution to traffic is to stop certain plates from going out. Yes. That just incentivizes people to buy two the- cars. True. So... In an effort to stop more cars from going on the road, all of a sudden, you have twice as many cars potentially out there. Mm, yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, Colombia and Mexico Sort of there. It's not an, ass- yes. it's yeah, not like, an assurance, but it's, it's sort of there, yeah. I, I, w- I would like to think that uh, the data from Mexico City show that exactly. <laughs> like We have uh, facts, people. Real facts. <laughs> Hashtag real facts. Uh, because... Because Mexico did try, like, this number coding scheme, and apparently it brought up driving all in all, uh, on the whole, because more people are potentially driving cars because you have more cars out there and that sort of thing, right? Um, it happens in Manila. Most people have more than one car, right? It's like a prerequisite to have the nice car and the car that you use when you can't go out. And on days where, like, you're, and, and on days where you're not coding, instead of taking one car out, because you have two cars, you're taking both of them out anyway, you know? Instead of carpooling, like a civilized human being. <laughs> anyway, Nikki's theory is, uh, Uber also had the same sort of effect. 
uh-huh. because um, you still have more cars on the road. Yeah, because you have more cars on the road because of the way Uber works, or because of the way the quote sharing economy works in the third world, uh, where if, you have if not more cars over more time, actually. Right. So, like, instead of average people putting their cars up for uber so you know utilizing the you space buy in the new cars car. yeah you have these enterprising filipinos buying an entire fleet of cars and putting are putting them up for uber and as a as a result you have m- many more cars on the road because uber was supposed to solve the traffic problem of metro manila because they're outsmarting traffic together. Wait, no, that's ways. It's not. It was. I was like, that was very, very passionately strong. It's not. Like I'm a spokesperson for Uber. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I don't. I remember Uber's messaging in the first place, uh, and that's what got me to buy was that it was a better option from the local taxis. It never. At the beginning, it never uh, said that it was going to be the solution to traffic. It was either. Uh, make money on the side uh, or uh, we're better than a, uh, we're safer or better than a taxi That's that was their messaging before uh, they're just only now messaging uh, changing their messaging to make uh, or help solve Manila traffic by, by uh, pushing their other services Uber Pool and the other one with cars yes real facts uh, <laughs> not endorsed by Uber uh, uh, and the Uber Hop yes they're, they're pushing those two uh, because of the whole, you know, more people can ride in the same car thing. So it's less, supposedly less expense, uh, less less cars on the road, supposedly, but it doesn't really... You're right, you're right, Nikki, Jao, you're right. It doesn't really <laughs> stop all the other Ubers from staying out in the on the streets. Right, so, uh, it's, a, it's a... It's a conundrum. They're not necessarily making it worse, but they're not really helping... Eh. Plus, if more people make money from Ubers, they're incentivized to buy more cars, which can get more cars on the road. You know, it's kind of, which, you know, uh, makes people get onto an Uber more. I, I don't know. It's what ifs and uh, what could be, right? Um, yeah, so there's, there's that. But then, like, it isn't, it isn't simply the quoting scheme and Uber, obviously. Yes. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to think that, um, that the, traffic situation got worse uh, as a result of the price of gas just dropping precipitously. Now it's rising. Yeah, so like... Uh, like <laughs> but, like, th- there was a time when it was, like, 60 pesos per liter or something of gas. Yeah, I remember that. And the traffic really wasn't that bad. And, you know, when... Um, when... Merca. Well, when when the U.S. discovered or not discovered, but learned how to excuse me, learned how to frack oil, then like the price of a barrel of oil went down by like fifty percent. Yeah, sorry, math not good. I was reading chat. It was like what it went from like a hundred to something like fifty dollars for a barrel. I'm sure like Nico is gonna look that up. Um, yeah, and yes, I do not remember who said that, but somebody said that. Uh, Somebody was quoted as saying the prosperity of a city isn't determined by when the poor can afford a car, but when the rich take public transport. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I mean, like, right now, the middle class don't want to take public transport. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, it isn't, it isn't uh, when, it isn't when the middle class can buy cars that you can say that the city is good. Um, hmm. Uh, although, it is, question it is though. when those folks in Forbes decide to take the MRT. <laughs> I, I'd like to see that happen. <laughs> um, question though. Um, there's one. There's one aspect we haven't really touched. Um, the UV Express shuttles. Yeah. Would expanding on those or cutting down on those help alleviate traffic in Metro Manila? Like we've talked about how I, I've already mentioned that the government should take over, you know, buses, trikes, jeepneys, almost all public transport, <laughs> really. 
So if they don't have to be to compete in a private sector or they don't have to fill quotas, then they don't have to rush. They don't have to cause accidents. They don't have to necessarily take risks. They don't have to take unnecessary risks for traffic. Uh, everything would be more orderly and it's not going to solve the there are significantly more cars on the road problem but it would lessen the amount of times we would see car collisions i assume oh dude so haha researcher good um (laughs) the quote is uh yeah really it's actually a quote but the idea of it. Anyway, it's it's from um, Gustavo Francisco Petro Ure. Urego? Urego? Yeah. Urego? A Colombian politician and economist. He was the mayor of the capital city, Bogota. Bogota. So maybe we don't learn how they won the drug war, but we <laughs> learn <laughs> from, from their traffic schemes. <laughs> from this idea about how we have to have a good public transportation system to stop traffic. <laughs> we should have had more infrastructure built decades ago. Yeah. So we should have had. Oh, well. That's that. And you were saying something? We're trying to build more roads. Why aren't we building more trains? Uh, we are. There are plans for it. But I mean, like <laughs> inner city trains. Uh, because remember, we had a friend that once worked for a... Uh, a private public works company. Uh-huh. Right? He worked for that company that built the toll roads and whatnot. Some of the toll roads in Metro Manila. Right. So anyway, the budget was either to expand the train system or build out the highways. And the budget went to more roads as opposed to a better train system. Yeah, okay. More cars for the poor, I guess. Or the middle class. Ah, uh, GG. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to make what we already have better that make me want to buy more cars <laughs> um so like the idea I, well I, I don't know you know just, uh, find a way to make it easier to get around while at the same time taking cars off the road I'd, I'd like to see a future where you know at least we start with you know an, uh, let's see uh, Makati to BGC to Ortigas monorail system at least that yeah make it happen Ayala yeah actually you know the What's it? What what could really use a good like public transport system is uh, to to get, get getting people from like the bedrooms of Manila to uh, Makati and Ritigas, right? So that that pretty much means a high capacity sort of train going from uh, Angono, Antipolo. Kainta. Yeah. And then to Kavite. the south, right? The, the the guys from Sukat, from... Shout out. Uh, <laughs> Bikutan. Yes. Right? So, like, instead of making another layer of Skyway... We build high-speed trains? A train. <laughs> you know, something like that. It should be it should be that way, because that high building more highways would just require us to get cars. Exactly. It, it doesn't fix the buses. <laughs> it doesn't fix the jeepneys, the trikes, or the thousands of scooters out there that are just waiting for a collision. Sorry, guys, but you know you know what you're getting into. It's, it's crazy traffic. It's hard to drive around Manila, and you're getting into a motorcycle. So you know what it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Train system would be better. Uh, we don't have to rely on us to be actually a wide awake at 5 a.m. to try to get to Makati on time for work. And yeah, there is that idea about, um, about like squatters living by the tracks getting killed by trains passing by, but. Things we have to live with, right? I'm not saying we have to live with that, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just say, you know? There's, there's, there's a reason uh, casualties of pro of progress of progress yeah <laughs> well there is a reason that it is you know uh, they're, they're not supposed to live there in the first place guys yeah there's a reason that you're supposed to that it's, it's called um it's called contributory negligence yes <laughs> moving on um but uh yeah right. uh, because Interest. like I, I was i was supposed to make this transition about removing removing cars from the road and speaking of removing stuff it's something that ag said on uh <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook was that he's going through like that purge thing where you look at your friends list and you're like I don't know this person remove or block or unfollow or whatever yeah 
So, like, what are your thoughts on that? It's interesting, I think. Uh, we haven't really had social networking sites before, especially not one as uh, history or as uh, long surviving as Facebook is so far. Uh, so, it's interesting because of how it's built. You collect all these uh, friends or associates or light acquaintances or whatnot. Uh, things change, people grow out of touch, but you're still connected. Uh, it's not like before where if you if you're, you have a faded friendship, it just kind of fades away. It's still there. They're just kind of neglecting it. Yeah. I went somewhere else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are my thoughts on it? And it's an interesting phenomenon uh, that AG has or any, everybody else has gone through on some level where they unfollow people that they're no longer f- really friends with or they no longer really consider friends. Yeah, well, I, I guess it, it has to do with, like, your view on, like, what social media means, right? Because yeah. to, to some, uh, social media is a super high number that you can monetize mm-hmm. and sort of... Uh, and, and also, how you, I guess, how you silo your life, right? Like um, the the number of people on Twitter is like 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 for me um, I don't view Twitter as a very like personal quote unquote platform, but like Facebook for example, I try to make it a point that most if not all of the people that um, that I am friends with on Facebook like I could recognize walking down the street and be like hey I know you. And we went to school together or that kind of thing. Mm. Not necessarily like, oh, yeah, we were in the class of so-and-so, but like, I remember seeing you on campus, you know. Right, right. So I try to make sure that at least that's, or I, I, I think that that's how uh, I view Facebook. But apparently um, some people like have an, ever, uh, an even like tighter, uh, what do you call it? Like a Closer a, knit yeah. group. Yeah, like um, a smaller like, circle, or or would like to keep Facebook to a smaller circle. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's less public. It's less social. Well, it, I, I, it really depends on. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it really depends on how you're using Facebook. It changes over time. Uh, it starts out with you adding friends. <laughs> uh, ends with you removing friends. <laughs> ends with you cutting, uh, trimming the hedges. Uh, people who uh whose friendships did not go as deep as you probably thought at the time you added them as friends, I guess. And then eventually having your Facebook page memorialized. Yes. That's a thing. <laughs> That's a thing. Right. You don't have to go to the cemetery anymore, necessarily. That's like a really interesting phenomenon. Like, like what do you do with a person's social profile when they die? Because we are reaching that point where, you know, it's still there, right? It's like a, it's a, it's like a mausoleum. It is the record of who you are. It doesn't. Nobody deletes it. It doesn't disappear. It's just there, the record of everything you've ever said online, <laughs> visible to whoever has added you as a friend, and you've added back. Right. And so some memories are sharper. <laughs> Some members will never fade away. <laughs> it depends on whether you have a 4K monitor. <laughs> <laughs> or whether you're at a 640 CRT. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, but then at the same time, like, remember when Multiply shut down? Yeah. A couple of years back. That was also in some way like a, a moment of clarity for me. That, um, yes, like there is persistence to your actions online or there is you know this record of you online but say if facebook dies then just like memory all of it's gone all of it is gone you know um because i i, I was really active on multiply when it was still like a social <laughs> networking blog thing right like oh i'm going to make a blog it's a combination social network and blog yeah, so... So weird how Multiplay evolved into a marketplace. Yeah. Well, what is it now? Is it still, like, a thing? No, it's 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 really dead. It's gone now. Yeah, like, wait, let me... Let me multiply look at com. It was Multiply.com, right? <laughs> yeah, it was Multiply.com. It's, it's it gone now. What? what happened? 
It just it, the the title is just uppercase multiply. All right, tech in Asia. There's an article called "What's Happened to Multiply," and oh, it was an e-commerce a... giant in Indonesia. Huh. Yeah, like it was it was big in Asia. <laughs> apparently, All right. So apparently, there's another company that's calling itself Multiply now. Fan engagement platform for the 21st century. Add your email to find out more. <laughs> nah, no thanks. Big spam, so much spam. <laughs> Ah, oh, dude, something cool that, uh, when, when it comes to spam, um, something that I'm encouraging you to do and I encourage everybody to do is, like, get your own URL, uh, get your own domain name. And uh-huh. for everything that you sign up for, create a separate email forward. What? <laughs> right? So, like, whenever I fill out a form or whatever like for for school right if i if i have to fill out a form um i pop into the app on my phone create a forward uh, an, an email forward which is like name of school at then jawatianza.com okay and I, I do the same thing with everything that i sign up for you know why that way i know who's sending me spam so if I get spam from a penis enlargement pill company, I just have to look at I just have to look at the email address that it sent the spam to and I know who gave away my email address. I see. That's interesting. And if I want it to stop, I can just turn off right I can just like kill the forward. Yeah, but doesn't those uh, don't those things uh, cost money now? If you connect your domain name to your email address, no. Um, just just uh, so like get real um, technical. <laughs> let's see. So say um, say you sign up for a I don't know a <laughs> service multiply. Yeah, so you sign up for multiply, right? Um, and you have a domain name at Um I will open up the GoDaddy app and I will create an email forward which will e- which will uh, yeah so, so the, the forward is multiply at atianzimusic.com and I set it to forward all email that is sent to that email address to my Gmail inbox I that's see. free I can't Wait. I, I cannot email as um, multiply at tianzamusic.com uh-huh. but I receive email from that email address. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, it gives you more control over you know, the services that you sign up for and whatnot. That's, uh, yeah, all right. <laughs> so I just say that sounds like a lot of work. Uh, not really. It, yeah, uh, look into really. it. I mean, you know, it's just. But uh, more importantly, I would actually want to ask, like, <clears throat> how is it? How important is it to have your own website in 2016? I have no idea. Uh in this in the age of social media, how? I remember when a uh, in the early to the mid 20s, it was important to have your own website or blog for some reason. I, I don't know. Because we, we assume people are lining up to listen to what we have to say. And then, you know, now we have a Twitter account, apparently. <laughs> and, a, and a Facebook page. So, uh, now I'm questioning, like, what's the point of a personal website? Well, it depends on yeah. how big you are, I guess. Yeah. Portfolio sites, I kind of sort of guess. Aside from, I'm just, it's just sitting there. <laughs> yeah. But say if you're like, if you're big enough, you should have your own website, I guess. That way, like, that way you're uh, not going through the rest of stuff. I guess. Dude, if we could afford it, I uh, I would not use YouTube to live stream our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if we could afford it. Like, if we could afford that. Um, you know, if, if we could afford... Uh, well, no. Sponsor I, I kinda, us! I, I kind of like, I kinda like our... Uh, hosting with what's it i, I kind of like that we're hosted by archive.org but you know we are huh okay yeah like all of the audio files are on archive.org so mm. so miko is asking are you upset that the other norms took your online stuff <laughs> um 
I think he's referring to the incident a few years ago when I had a, a bit of a, a, a short kind of verbal discussion with <laughs> a short discussion over Twitter with Norman Tan from Singapore. Shout out you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, because, uh, he left the Twitter handle at Norman Tan alone for a while. Yeah. So I, I saw it and took my opportunity. I was like, I took over it. He got pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I miss my old, I miss my old, uh, handle, but, you know, some Filipino took it. I didn't think he'd take it so immaturely. I thought he'd just, you know, suck it up and walk away. <laughs> But, uh, no, actually, I'm not upset that the other norms took my online stuff. Uh, they, they haven't really, more of the people have not actually fought me over domains and, uh, Twitter handles, surprisingly enough. Yeah. But you got your, what, what is your Twitter handle? At uh, Norman the Norman Tan. The Norman Tan. Oh, at the Norman Tan. Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, that's what I changed it to ever since he, you know, <laughs> since, File the complaint. <laughs> since Norman Tan from Singapore got mad. <laughs> since 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 Nor- Norman Tan Singapore got mad, and you know, since I'm not famous enough to get verified, Twitter, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not like at real Norman Tan. Yeah, it's the Norman Tan. Looking at you, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. I actually want to find out how many Norman Tans are out there. Kind of just stage an event on Facebook. Thing. See how many of my uh, similarly Hello. named compatriots are actually Chinese. Uh, you we'll have it. We'll, we'll name it the Normcon. <laughs> you should. Uh, Block off my, from all of Asia. Uh, what's it? One of my cousins has a Facebook group called the David Lat Club, where like it's just a whole bunch of people from all parts of the world named David Lat. Huh. How did that go? I don't know. He just told me Are about it. Are they actually all friends? <laughs> I have no idea. Although I should do that though. I should do that now. Like have the Jawa Tienza club. But then that's going to be a bunch of Portuguese people. And Brazilian <laughs> people. You're going to have to learn. Is Portuguese... Portuguese is pretty close to Spanish. If it, if not. Yeah, right? If not actually Spanish. Uh, it's close enough. No. <laughs> not, <laughs> not even. Really. <laughs> not at all. Not really. It's different enough to be a different Slat- language. <laughs> It's Latin enough? <laughs> yeah, you can, you can sort of Make tell that sad. they have, like, the same, like, root words and stuff, but they're pretty different. All right. Know? Sort of like how, um, sort of like how Filipino and Hawaiian probably, probably had, like, a mother language. Oh, all right. You know, like, if you count from one to ten in Hawaiian, in the Polynesian languages, in Filipino, in the Malay languages, they all have, like, this similar sort of sound to them and they all came from one language but they've fractured enough that they aren't I think the term is like mutually comprehensible or something so no Miko says it's uh, close like Spanish is close to Italian see si. and that's probably so like the only similarity between Spanish and Italian. well no not really they have like the similar open... verbs in the sense that you know, they the have the core language the structure is the same but like the vocabulary is kind of Similar ish, but not really. It evolved differently, but the core words are same, right? For the words no. that aren't used, <laughs> funny dude. For the words that aren't used very much, the like they are similar, but the words that are used a lot are really different. Okay, I think I think that's well, how it goes, or it could well, be it, it could be the other way around. I don't know. Language evolves over time and whatnot, right? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna transition from like earlier when we were talking about like if I could afford or if if, if uh, Channel Fourteen could afford it, we wouldn't be live streaming on YouTube. I was gonna transition mm-hmm. into the Patreon account. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, help us transition out of YouTube, <laughs> or you know, just if if you can donate a few bucks on Patreon. Just you, a few. Yeah, you get a you get a supporter show for it. Um, Please, sir. Uh... Yeah. Papa like too, more. sir. <laughs> Keep the electricity running and whatnot. Uh, yeah. Keep us on air. Mm-hmm.